So in this video, we're gonna discuss how COMT gene alterations can lead to estrogen dominance and why this is not always the case where COMT uh, alterations will lead to estrogen dominance. So if you're curious about COMT, how it relates to estrogen dominance, keep watching. We're gonna discuss this in detail. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. Also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong. And almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the, um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. COMT or catecholomethyl transferase is an enzyme in our bodies that allow us to break down catecholamines. And as it relates to estrogen dominance, this enzyme, this COMT enzyme, basically helps us break down uh, catechol estrogens. It's a type of catecholamine. And in this video, we want to discuss how alterations in the COMT gene can lead to estrogen dominance. So you might be asking, what is estrogen dominance? And basically, uh, it's a phenomenon of excess estrogen in the presence of uh, too low or too little uh, progesterone. So there's an imbalance. You have too much estrogen, too little progesterone. And um, Basically, as it relates to COMT, there's an alteration in enzyme function that leads to higher levels of the estrogen. So first, a little bit more on COMT. So COMT, as I said, is an enzyme that breaks down catecholamines and many other things <clears throat> that we don't think of as necessarily catecholamines uh, like estrogen. So specifically, it's uh, catechol estrogens, and the process occurs through methylation. So methylation uh, is basically a process where you add a methyl group to other molecules. And in this case, uh, the, the COMT enzyme uses SAMe as its methyl donor along with magnesium. So these are the two cofactors for COMT, magnesium and SAMe. Um, and basically what happens is you turn hydroxyestrogens into methoxyestrogens or methylated estrogens. So you say, okay, big deal. Well, if you have an alteration in your COMT enzyme, basically slows the process of turning that hydroxyestrogen into methoxyestrogen or catechol estrogens. And basically you get a buildup of more of these hydroxyestrogens and estrogens in general. So that makes sense. Basically it's like a overflowing river. So when the levels uh, get too high in the estrogens, they overflow and sort of saturate and increase this tissue saturation of estrogens. So um, basically you get more of this estrogen activity and uh, leads to the symptoms of estrogen dominance. So how do you know if you have a genetic alteration in your COMT gene or if your COMT enzymes aren't working properly? Well, basically you have to do the genetic tests to, uh, to look at this. And uh, what you'll find is that there's several uh, points along the COMT uh, enzyme that can be altered. And that's where you can get basically a bunch of different uh, SNPs or SNPs. Uh, and um, what seems to stand out most uh, to me clinically is one in particular, and most of the research is done on this particular uh, point or uh, single nucleotide polymorphism, and that's the V, uh, v like Victor 158M. Um, and basically, if this uh, specific point is altered to where you have uh, homozygous or met-met uh, alteration here, you're going to have slowed estrogen breakdown or slowed breakdown of all these catecholamines. And that step from hydroxyestrogen to methoxyestrogen is going to be slowed uh, for estradiol and um, any other estrogens that go through that pathway. And when you have the uh, normal functioning COMT or valval, it's gonna work uh, more efficiently or normal. Um, but uh, 
basically, yeah, you're going to have more efficient estrogen breakdown. So does that mean that everyone with the COMT homozygous SNP or MET-MET will have estrogen dominance? No, not at all, because there's multiple pathways through which estrogen can be eliminated. And uh, also it's important to note that the methylated forms uh, provide an efficient way for elimination by the body, but these uh, once they're methylated, they're still estrogens and can still bind to estrogen receptors. So these forms can still basically have an estrogen effect in the body. <clears throat> so what we want to be careful is not to overemphasize one pathway uh, or overemphasize um, looking at just one thing. We want to look at, uh, when we look at estrogen dominance and COMT, we also want to, you know, basically do the labs to verify yet yeah, is this excess estrogen or not and then we want to look at the other pathways there are other pathways through which estrogen is broken down COMT is just one and then you know there's several that follow it and other alternative pathways where estrogen can be broken down and I'll have more on this topic in future videos so hopefully that was helpful in understanding a little bit more on COMT gene alterations and estrogen dominance, how that uh, one may lead to the other and in some cases may not uh, basically cause, uh, there's not always a linear path there uh, for every single situation. So if you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.